would be all over. Geronimo's under. And Cincinnati has won the world championship, beating the Boston Red Sox 4-3. to three. The Reds win it in Fenway Park. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. This could be it. Left field, George Foster makes the catch. That's it. The Cincinnati Reds win the World Series. It was a sweep. The final score, Cincinnati 7, the New York Yankees 2. Hello, Reds Country Radio. National League fans, baseball fans, all fans. Baseball. And, uh, to take the uh, the loop off of it. How are you, Doug? Doing good, doing good. Glad to be here today. Red Raider Doug and I are going to talk about the National League, the National League Central, and of course the Cincinnati Reds and how they are faring in uh, 2024. Um, mixed bag of tricks so far. We were talking about this off air how it just doesn't make sense when you look at what they've done here recently. You know, how does this team, how does this same team, the Cincinnati Reds, go out and sweep the Dodgers and then drop two or three to the terrible Cardinals? All at home. All at home, yep. Um, You, you know, if you look now, I know Walker Bueller's not pitching the way he'd, he did pre-injury, but they beat Walker Bueller and Yamamoto in that Dodger in the Dodger series last weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, all in all, when you're looking at the Reds right now, they're sitting here. Uh, what are, what are we at? This twenty five. So seven games under five hundred. You don't like that, but they're only three and a half out of the final wild card. So now, granted. There's what, one, two, three, four, five, six teams you'd have to jump, but there's a long way to go. This isn't like three and a half, six to jump, and we got two weeks to play, right? Yeah. We're talking about a long way to go. Pretty much all it means is that Cincinnati's got to clean up their house, start playing good baseball, and there's a lot of baseball left. Yeah. um, I'll tell tell you right off the bat, no pun intended, but those this team is just playing so offensively anyway, so lackluster. It, it's like they're not there. You'll get, I mean, the reason they beat the Dodgers because you had great games from uh, India, De La Cruz, Steer, but it's not consistent every day. You'll have, like, one of the best players, he'll have a great game, and we'll win that game. Now, luckily, we strung three games with the Dodgers. Uh, India had a great game in game one, Ellie in game two, and Steer in game three. But it's not a whole team effort. It's like one individual will come out there and, and offensively drive in some runs. But the rest of the team doesn't follow suit. Then you come into the next series, and nobody plays. It's just this constant, chronic, almost apathy that this – these guys are offensive playing right now. I mean, last time we were on, we were talking about uh, Ellie Data Cruz with 30 steals. He's only had two steals since the last time we spoke. He's not gotten on base. He And this last week around, he's only one of nine getting on base. His OPS has gone down gone down to, uh, I think it's 409 now. He's, he's batting 261. Steer is batting 241. And he's only... Uh, I think he's uh, he's two of eight in his last, uh, or two out of ten in his last ten at bats. Yeah, and, and you look at it. I was just taking a glance at it real quick while you were talking. Um, if you look at okay, so let's just take it for the teams that they are chasing in the wild card, right? The only teams that have scored less runs this year is and actually if you look at it all right let's say the national league the reds have scored 13 more runs of the miami marlins who are pitiful 
they have scored five more runs in the Pittsburgh Pirates. They have scored nine more runs in the Washington Nationals who are like this. You never know what Washington national team you're going to get. And actually, they've been playing much better in the second half of the season so far than they did at the very beginning. So their offense is starting to come to life. The Cardinals, they have them beat by 17 runs. But remember, at the beginning of the year, the Cardinals offense was just putrid. They couldn't score. So outscoring the Cardinals right now really isn't saying anything because they're the bottom of the league. They've just... With, with the strange thing about the Cardinals and the reason why they're sitting where they're at in the in the standings is because they either crap the bed or they play a really good low scoring game and get the win. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be an in between with the Cardinals. Every time I see a Cardinals score, they've either lost like seven to two or they've squeaked out a three to two victory, right? Mm -hmm. And then I think one of the most concerning things is one of, one of the dullest offenses I think of in Major League Baseball. When I think top to bottom, I'm like, yeah, that's a terrible offense. Who wants to watch that crap? In fact, I'm always betting the under when they play. Is the San Francisco Giants, right? San Francisco Giants have outscored the Cincinnati Reds by 17 runs, and I would have never guessed that going into the season because – you look at the offensive firepower that the Reds have and the fact that they play in the Great American Small Park, you would think the runs would come in bunches, and maybe they will. We're, we're, this is June 1st. We're hitting June. It starts warming up there. Maybe, you know, maybe all this will figure itself out with, with the, uh, with the uh, weather warming up and in that small ball field, maybe the wind starts blowing out or whatever. But you can't lean on all of that because you do have to compare yourself to the rest of the league. You can't just say, oh, well, it was it. when when push comes to shove, you have to compare yourself to the rest of the league. I do believe that scoring is down across the, the board. I see balls all the time this year, not just Braves games, but all the time. I think that ball's gone. It looks like it's gotten smoked and it's dying at the warning track. So I'm starting to believe, and I, if I'm usually the first person to scoff and laugh, and anyone who's got their uh, tinfoil hat on about conspiracies, but I'm starting to believe that Major League Baseball has put balls into play that are not as juiced as they were last year. Because last year the ball was flying out. Last right. night I was calling the game. There were two. There were two balls, Doug, that were hit. The, last year, not only would they have been home runs, they would have been well into the seats. Both of them died at the warring track. One was Marcelo Zuna, and you know he can smoke it. Yeah. I mean, he walloped one, and I was just, I was getting, I was already loading up. You know, I've got a handful of home run calls, and I was already going, all right, which, which one are we doing on this one? And it died at the warring track. And then the other one was an Orlando Arcia pop-up that uh, wasn't hit quite as hard, but that one would have went left the building last year so i'm convinced that there's something to this and i don't know if you've heard this conspiracy i don't believe we've talked about it but the reason why they're saying that the ball is get that they're putting a less juice ball out there this year than last year is because last year you had a lot of big name free agent pitchers going to the market this year it's going to be flooded with a bunch of hitters guys like pete alonzo and so the idea is if the, if the offensive stats are lower, they believe that that, that that player will take less money. Now, I have a hard time buying that story at the, from the jump because the first thing I come to is, well, okay, but let's say Alonzo only hits 40 home runs this year. If it's leading the National League, you still got to pay him top dollar. So, I, so that's why I always push back. But now I'm starting to wonder, is there something to this? I don't think there's a lot to it. I, it's kind of, I think it's a little bit thin. I can understand it, but I can kind of relate it back to the Reds and their hitting problems. They're just not getting hits to win games. We're, we're not talking about grand slams and home runs and scoring 15 runs. They themselves, with their hitting problems, they they can't get a sit. They can't finish out games. They can't, you know, like Cardinals in the last game. 
they couldn't get a hit in the ninth inning. Simple hits, a, a singles here, a, a double here, basic baseball. And I don't, you know, I haven't watched everybody else. I don't know if it's indicative that they're downplaying their offense. But I would, I wouldn't push that conspiracy. That conspiracy. I, I can tell you this as a sports better because you, you, you know, I, I do the sports gambling on this channel as well, and I've done really well this year. And one of the things that I've done very well consistently is I've been taking the under. Mm -hmm. I've been taking the under, especially uh, in the first five innings with good starting pitching, right? And I've been winning a pretty good clip on that. That wasn't my strategy last year. Last year, you kind of there was a mixed bag of tricks. You couldn't always bank on, man, this is going to be a low scoring game because pitcher A and pitcher B are a good matchup. Let's go. Let's get it. The market will eventually uh, adjust, and they're already starting to adjust. They're starting to give lower uh, unders available. So, in other words, a lot of times when you go to bet the first five innings, you are taking the two teams total to be under five and a half runs, right? And if I find a really good matchup on that, I'll take that. I'll parlay it with another one. I'll do a two-team parlay, and it'll pay about one-to-one -one dividends, and I've been doing really well with that. Well, what I've noticed here in the last week or two, there's more and more games that the total is now four and a half is the lowest you can get it, and that does wow. make a difference. People don't realize it, but that does make a difference, and the point to that being – they're not all Cy Young candidates going up against each other, right? It's not like, well, you can't expect it to be a very high total when these two pitchers are going. I mean, we're talking about middle-of-the-road pitchers, and we're starting to get four and a half. So, I, well, they, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I was noticing this, you know, just following, just following fantasy. I've, I had a lot of pitchers this week where that number four keeps coming up, four earned runs here. The, the 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 score is four three, um, and a lot of my fantasy pitchers. So I'm saying if there's if there's a proof of conspiracy theory, I can see it there because that number four keeps coming up over and over again. Four earned runs here, four earned runs there. So that that could give credence to the the idea of uh, of that conspiracy theory and how it works to online betting. Because that number four keeps coming up over and over again all week long, especially this week is when I noticed it. Yeah, so, you know, for instance, I mean, I'll just give you an example. Braves essentially had the same roster that they had last year, mm -hmm. right? And we are sitting, how many games are we into uh, 55 games that Atlanta has played. I'm using this because I know their stats off the top of my head. 55 games, so you can pretty much spill this out into essentially a third of the season, right? Right. The Braves last year hit 307 home runs. So comparably, you should be somewhere near the 100 range. Right. They're sitting at 57. They're on pace to be about half the home runs. Now, I know that's just one team, and I get it. But it's essentially the same roster. This wasn't like this ain't like a college football team. We're like, well, you lost your quarterback, you, you you know, your wide receiver hit the transfer portal, right? This is essentially the same roster. Granted, Acuna hasn't been in the lineup the you know the past week or so, but it's essentially the same roster. We're talking about a third of the home runs hit. And that is uh, a, an alarming number. And if you look at the, the league leader, well, you're like, well, but the league leader probably has close to that. No, the league leader, leader who's played 59 games, which is well over a third of the season, you can't even really put, you put that out and say, well, you should really shave a couple off. So let's say we'll shave off 59 run, 59 games. We'll say that, at a third of the season, right now the Yankees have 86 home runs. We'll say it should have been 80, right? If you're, if we're truly at the, 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 uh, the third mark, you're still only talking about 240 home runs for the league leader. That's a 67 home run difference, yeah. and that's and that to me is the alarming thing. Is it? It's the number of home runs that are not being hit, and. 
just in general, the runs that aren't being scored across the league. Cincinnati is sitting. How many home runs does Cincinnati have this year? Da, 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 da. They are sitting at. Uh, just had it here. Here we go. All right. So the Braves are they're at fifty three. Mm-hmm. They're at fifty three. Last year, the Cincinnati Reds. Where did they finish at in home runs? They finished with 198. So once again, they're nowhere near their clip because they're essentially a third of the way in. And they and if this were to play out the rest of the season, they're going to fall short of about 50 home runs. And I know they weren't a huge slugging team, but the Reds put some runs on the board last year. Yeah. So I'm starting to think there might be something to this. Like I said, I'm the first person to laugh and scoff and go, get the hell out of here. Take your damn, you know, tinfoil hat and shove it up, uh, shove it up where the sunshine don't. <laughs> but I'm starting to think, well, I don't know, man. Is there something to this? Because there are balls and it's not just the games that I do. I'm talking about I will be watching a game and I'm like, that's gone. And then it's dying at the warning track. So. If anybody would do anything, it would be the owners to affect the the almighty pocketbook. It could be. Um, it could be. I mean, we, we have to wait and see and just keep looking at it. It, you know, I can't well, use. We the will. Reason, but, we will, huh? baby. Because oh, because that was on my radar. It wasn't I, on my I, radar before. Two three weeks ago, I wasn't even bringing this up because I'm like, dude, it's still early. It's still early. It's still early. We're gonna be looking at this number. And if the total run home run total in Major League Baseball isn't well over 250, it doesn't have to hit the 307 mark that the Braves hit last year because that tied the all time record. I get that. Right. But if it isn't 275, 280, 285, somewhere in that neighborhood, then we've got an issue. And I'm also going to compare it to other teams because just because one team does it doesn't mean anything. I was and I was going to say because don't don't use the Reds as a as as a marker of what what may or may not be going on. No, I mean, I'm, I'm using the Atlanta Braves who had the yeah, best. That's thing. Use the use the Braves. Yeah, use the other teams. Use the Braves as your marker it's, for that. Think don't. about the guys that are going to hit free agency, and I'm just going to grab the top two in the biggest city, Juan Soto and Pete Alonso. They could combine to. Uh, grab about 750 800 million dollars but if they have what is considered down years compared to what went down like in other words last year the home run total for for major league baseball it was uh matt olson's 53 right but it, but if the home run total if the top home run total this year ends up being in the low 40s well that's going to be a big dollar difference yeah. Now a, a guy like Max Fried will get paid because he's a free agent, but they'll, they're okay to do that with one pitcher as opposed to because we've already seen how the owners have frozen out the older pitchers. I think Max Fried's going to go that same route. I think he's going to get pissed off at what's going to really happen. But if you didn't get big time long term commitment to the Cy Young winner in uh Blake Snell and the guy that pretty much carried the Texas Rangers in Jordan Montgomery. Max Fried's going to be 32 at at opening day next year. Are you mm-hmm. going to get a 5-6 year deal? Well, and I I hear people uh insinuating he wants a 5-year 200 million dollar deal. He's not getting that. He's not getting anywhere close to that because Carlos Rodon of the Yankees what was it two seasons ago? Yeah. Remember they dropped what 165 over five years? He mm-hmm. has not pitched anywhere close to that. Only recently has he even looked like even a a sliver of what he was a couple right. of years ago. So I gave up on him in, in our dynasty league because I was like, man, I'm not doing this again this year. I can't do it. Yeah, I don't blame. Him. Well, I rolled the dice. He was he, as of like I said recently, we're talking like I don't know, three weeks. He's shown a little spark, but not great. 
Right now, yeah, I mean, he's better this year, but when you look at his uh, his uh, velo and his control, it's nowhere near where it was. And I thought it was, I, I'm pretty sure I stood on this show and, you know, clapped along because I thought it was a great signing by the Yankees. I thought he was right right there at, at ace level. Yeah. And I, just show goes to show you, father time, especially starting pitchers, that dude's still undefeated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And always will be. Here's a shocker. Um, top home run hitters teams for teams, Major League Baseball. You don't have this in front of you, right? No. Okay, good. I'll do a little exercise. Okay. So the top three usual suspects would shock nobody. It's the Yankees. It's the Orioles. It's the Dodgers. But there are three teams in front of the Philadelphia Phillies. In fact, the Phillies are only one home run in front of the Milwaukee Brewers. But there are three teams in front of the Philadelphia Phillies. I'm going to give you five guesses to see if you can get any of them, much less all three. Because I would have never gotten this. Just give me some wild guesses. I'm not expecting you to get it, but if you if you bang on any of them, I'll, I'll give you credit. I'm just going to throw crazy stuff out here. I don't know. San Francisco Giants? No. <laughs> just throw it out there. Not quite that crazy. <laughs> okay. It's um, just the usual suspects. Mm. Especially considering their records this year. Seattle Mariners, maybe? No. Ah. That's a good guess, though. They're they're uh, just below uh, the Brewers. Oh, they're just okay. Yeah, because I was, the Brewers would have been my next guess, but I remember you said that. Um. Oh my God. Um. Oh. Toronto just Blue throw, Jays. Just throw some names out there. Toronto Blue Jays. Um. No. No, because they stink. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I'll throw a, Colorado Rockies. No, no. Although that's not a terrible guess considering where they play. Yeah. And, um, one more guess. One more guess. I'm try- oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh, my gosh. Um, I don't know. To, um, considering where they play, I don't know. St. Louis Cardinals. I don't know. You ready for that? Who are they? All three of these teams have more home runs than the Philadelphia Phillies, and this is this floors me. Tied for number five are the Los Angeles Angels and the Houston Astros. That oh, shocks man. me. Houston has played terribly. Angels don't have Otani, and they haven't had Trout for most of the year. Right. The number four team in Major League Baseball home runs. The Oakland Athletics. What? Yeah. Oakland Athletics have 70 home runs. Philadelphia Phillies have 67. They are five behind the Dodgers. They are nine behind the Orioles. They are 16 behind the Yankees, who who are pacing the league. That is a shocker to me. That is a shocker. That is a huge shocker. Yeah, I would have never said the A's after how how crazy I thought like the Rockies or the. Uh... Here's the crazy thing about the A's. They're ranked 26th in Major League Baseball in run scores, so that's a lot of solo shots. Yeah, it is. Holy crap! My God, I, yeah. So I check this that. out: the St. Louis Cardinals are 29th in baseball in 215 runs scored, right? Right. The Chicago White Sox are the last in baseball. That doesn't shock anybody. Right. What should shock you is that they are. God, is that right? They are 49 runs behind the Cardinals. They've only scored 166 runs this year in 58 games. So as bad as I think the Cardinals offense is, along with the Mariners and the A's and the and the Marlins, 
they are still anywhere between 50 to 55 runs less than those teams. That is putrid. Yes. <laughs> that is unbelievably bad. Now, between which, what we were just talking about with the, the A's hitting home runs like that, now I'm really starting to believe that conspiracy theory stuff. Because if we're sitting here talking about the Oakland A's with, with, with very top- controllable, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's yeah. that's an alarming number. Yes, it is. The Oakland A's. Here's the other thing that I've noticed this year, too. The stolen base totals. And they're they're pretty high considering. And this is the one of the things that concerns me. So if you're looking at the Cincinnati Reds, their second major league baseball with 86 stolen bases just behind the Washington Nationals. Right. The Brewers are right up there. The Phillies. You look at the bottom of the league. San Francisco, Detroit, Texas, and then the four, uh, no, sorry, Arizona, St. Louis. So that's 25 through 30 and tied with St. Louis is the Atlanta Braves. And when you start talking about a team that's not hitting the home runs and they're not stealing the bases, I know we're going to talk more about Reds, but I, I guess just my, my whole thing with what's going on in Atlanta because I get the question all the time. They're not even setting themselves up to score. And you can't rely on the long ball like you did last year, obviously. I mean, you're you're down a third. And I, I'm starting to believe that, that the ball is deadened. So you're going to have to start to, to score this year. You're going to have to start slapping the ball around. You're going to have to start playing. Now, I don't know if it's going to – if they are putting a less juice ball out there, they may flip the script come August and September because they want they want runs scored come playoff time, right? Mm-hmm. But for the foreseeable future, we'll say the trade deadline, you're going to have to create runs, and I think the, the Reds are doing a great job. I mean, you're talking about 86 stolen bases, only caught 22 times. So that's, that's not a terrible percentage, honestly. Um, you know, that, the Reds only have 53 home runs. Right. But they're trying to create runs in different ways. And that, and that's what they basically, that's what the Reds did last year. It was a lot of, uh, last year was a lot of really, really good base running. They they never, they never had a, a that, that team was never a powerball hitting team. But they got on base. They were consistently getting on base and getting the most out of their base running that they possibly could. That's why they scored a lot of the runs. You know, here's the other thing is, so the other thing you would look at more, more than anything else, it's run scored. It doesn't matter how you get there. It's how you score the runs. If mm-hmm. you're, con- what you're concerned at from the Cincinnati end is that they are in the bottom third of the league. They're ranked 21st overall. And you got to find a way to create those runs, not just with the stolen base, but doing the little things. Exactly. Seeing if any teams, are there any other teams in, down here? Yeah. You know, other than the Seattle Mariners, everyone else in the bottom third are teams that you wouldn't really consider contenders right now. Right. It's the White Sox, the Cardinals, the A's, the Marlins, Nationals. Although I do think they have a very good young core. Just watch them play four games in Atlanta. And I'm impressed. One of the things I'm more impressed than anything else with Washington, the Washington Nationals have a good young core of starting pitching. Yes. You take Patrick Corbin's sorry ass and throw him to the curb. That's that's not a terrible rotation. No, they went into Atlanta. They won three of four, but how they won three of four was their starting pitching. They've also got a very good back end of their bullpen. Their middle bullpen is the only con- only thing they've got concerns with. But if they've got the lead, they're not using those guys. But they went out and found some veterans that are pitching pretty damn well. Guys like Dylan Floro, um, Hunter Harvey. All these guys are, and I'll tell you what, that Finnegan is a pretty darn good closer. Yes, he is. But when you look at Cincinnati and look at 
trying to find your way up the ranks to get into playoff contention. Only what what did we say? Three back of the wild card? Mm-hmm. Three and a half. So you wanted to talk about uh Bell's decisions, decision making. What what was it that you wanted to get on that about? It's just been fairly recently, but it's been kind of frustrating. Uh to me, we've two games especially was Abbott's start in um I think it was with the Padres. We are in the fifth inning. We gave we lost that game because a lot of people felt and I felt, why did you keep Abbott in? Abbott had his second walk. He got two guys on, and everybody knows it's the one kind of downside of Andrew Abbott right now. When he starts walking people, he loses control. And you and David Bell kept him in. And we gave up the what would be the winning run against the Padres. I think that was game two with the Padres, if I remember right. And that start. Okay. Somebody made a bad decision. Okay. But then he's constantly done it again. He did it again with the to me, he punted the last game with the Cardinals. We were getting back in the game. He had started Buck Farmer in a previous start and then brings him in again in the ninth inning. And Farmer loses complete control of the game. They the uh, the um, the Cardinals score another run. I mean, he's he just given up walks. He's uh, they're getting base runners. Luckily, he pulled them again. And that ninth inning, then brought in uh, Cruz for, um, for now damage control. Now it's not been all bad going to Wrigley on Friday and get a win. Um, I can tell you right now, if I'm a, if I'm a Cubs fan, I was talking about this on on yesterday's uh, broadcast. I'd be irate with the third base um, uh third base coach of Chicago. Did you get a chance to catch that game? Yes, Is I watched I watched the whole thing yesterday. Yeah. I don't know if you were stuck at work. Um, the Reds are up by two runs, one out, ninth inning. Suzuki rattles one into the corner. And you, you know it's going to score a run, but they got over aggressive and sent the runner, the tying run, to home plate, and he was out by a mile. Yep. And I'm like, what are you doing? Because Cody Bellinger is about to come to the plate. It would have been runners on second and third, one out. You just need a fly ball to tie the game. So you're either going to have to pitch to Bellinger, which, by the way, for people who didn't watch the game, very next pitch, he launches one into right field, but it's caught at the wall. But that, but that would have scored the run, right? Yeah. Now, you could have walked Bellinger. I get that. But then you got the bases loaded. And are you going to do that? Right. So if you did that, you're still talking about just needing a fly ball to tie the game. And you couldn't have had the infield in because you put the infield in, then you're you're putting your defense in jeopardy of giving up the game winning run. Yep. But anyways, it just it was alarming to me that the Chicago Cup because I know if that happened. To my team, I'd be raising three hundred dollars with the hell. Like, what are you doing? And he and he was sending. I, I think he was sending Magical, who's not very fast. No, I mean he's not a tortoise, but he's definitely not a hare. Um, <laughs> tonight's game, Justin Steele versus Hunter Green. By the way, that's going to be on Fox, the national broadcast. One of I think I think there's two national games tonight, and that's one of them. Seven fifteen, mm -hmm. first pitch for those that are wanting to see it. I'm interested to see how this game plays out because Green has looked much better. And Justin Steele, I still think he hasn't quite gotten there yet. Now, well, he had a, he had I, a good do believe, okay. I do believe he's going to get there, but this should be a really good uh, test for both pitchers and could be a really fun pitcher's duel. Yes, it can be. I was just going to say, Justin Steele did play well in this last start. He he did well. He showed flashes of what he was. Seems like he's on the mend. He's coming back. He's getting better and better in his last three starts. He well, his breaking pitch has got to be working for him to work. Yeah, 
if coming out the gate, it wasn't. Now, maybe he just didn't get enough reps down on the farm uh, because for people who don't pay attention to it, he started the season late. But, yeah, he I mean, he's never going to be a guy that blows you away. He's a touch pitcher. But if I'm a Cubs fan, I'm not concerned about him long term. But you might be concerned about him tonight. I haven't seen. Let me see what the uh, the weather is going to be like there tonight because Wrigley Field in June. We're talking about a possible pitchers duel, but could all go away if. Uh, let me see here. Let me check the wind. But uh, what is going on with this? Here we go. Um, sorry, I got a hundred things that are popping up on this. I found a pretty good site to be able to to, to check weather and stuff like that. Here, here we go. But they've got three hundred things that you got to scroll through to find it. All right, here we go tonight in Wrigley. 715 first pitch. We have wind blowing in. Ooh, it might rain. 70% chance of rain. So keep that in mind. So we may get this uh might get a good old fashioned double header tomorrow, though they always seem to push them back when it's early in the season like this. But yeah. if you get the if we do get the game, um it's gonna be the wind's blowing in, so uh, we could get that that uh, pitching matchup. Yeah, and another thing to think too. I mean, just because I follow my enemies and fantasy with Justin Steele, I noticed when they brought him back, he was supposed to do two rehab starts. They went ahead and brought him back. They never did that second rehab start he was supposed to do. So that's why I I, I credit that more for his kind of kind of falling out of the gate and slowly kind of back. I, what you said, I don't think he got enough reps and he should have, he should have been sent for that second rehab start. So tomorrow, assuming this game gets played today, tomorrow it's Lodolo versus Br uh, Ben Brown. Um, of course that game could just not get played. It, it could end up just being the one game, which means they'd bump green and steel back. Um, and Brown Brown would go Monday. Lodola would go Monday. That's no, 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 me. Brown is a pitcher. I, I've seen him a couple of the couple of these starts. He's actually he's got some good stuff. So yeah, but I can see from the from the series they played against Atlanta, he's essentially a piggyback. Yeah. So, so he'll open. They'll try to go through the lineup twice, and then they're going to come get him. So I'm trying to think of who they went and got uh, around the fourth inning in that game. They went, can't remember who it was. Maybe Drew Smiley. God, yes. he's ter he is terrible. Um, I saw him coming to the game yesterday. I was like, yep, eh, Red's going to win this one. <laughs> I thought about that too. Man, Drew Smiley is mop-up duty at best. He mm -hmm. is, even when he was on his game in, in 2021, when he helped the when he helped the Braves bullpen, and he and he made a, several starts down the stretch, but honest engine they didn't use him in the playoffs much. Not not unless they were painting into a corner. He is just, right. he's just a, he's a soft tossing lefty that usually gets pummeled. Um, looking at the rest of the week though, you've got you're talking about the the upcoming schedule. They're in Colorado for three, then come home against the Cubs. A two-game, weird two-game set at home against Cleveland. I'm assuming that is, is that pretty traditional that you play a two-game set with Cleveland? Yeah, we always do. Braves have the same thing with the Red Sox every year. So I'm, th I'm thinking every team's got that where you play yep. two there and then they come and play two at your house. Is that essentially what? The, yeah, it's so weird. I hate, I, I, know. hate I hate two game series. I just wish they could fix that. Hate them. I'd rather do an extra four game series, whatever. I hate two game series. Um, And then at Milwaukee, which is when we'll be back here on Reds Country Radio, uh, June 15th. That ought to be a fun one 
at Milwaukee. So leading up to that, we won't even talk about the, the Milwaukee series because we'll, we'll come back on the air by then. Um, we got the Cubs this weekend, then at Colorado, then the Cubs, and then Cleveland. Yeah. Um, basically, half the games are on the road, half the games are at home. Yeah. And all winnable. Winnable if we could just get him, the theme of the day, if we could just get a hit. I mean, our bullpen's fine. The pitching's okay. It's average. But the teams we're playing, I'm not I'm not scared of the Cubs right now. The Cubs, I think, to me, they're in the same – they can't score either. So, I, I, I they don't scare me. Colorado doesn't scare me. Um, the only the only games are, is, is maybe Cleveland because Cleveland can hit. For all its other problems, Cleveland can get a hit. Yeah, um – And it's it's too far out in the future to project what the pitching matchups are. I, I see what they are right now, but you, you know they can a rain out here and there can throw all that. Um, the way and it's set up right now, all these games, including yesterday, and the two this weekend, and then the th or four games at home against Chicago, they're only going to face Imanaga once. And although he has looked human recently. He's been very impressive overall. Um, to me, their two best pitching pitchers on that entire staff are Imanaga and Assad. Uh, Steele, I know that he could still get back to form, but he's never been a guy that's that to me worries the hell out of me. I think that you can put bat to ball on Justin Steele. Mm-hmm. Ben Brown is once again, he's like an opener. He's like a swing man. Um, if the, if the, if the reds, so we got what? Five, nine, 11 games, not counting the Milwaukee game, which would be a 12th game, but we'll say 11 games going to that Milwaukee series. Right. I would be happy with six and five. Anything better would be gravy. Yes. Seven and four, you know, eight and three would be phenomenal. The, the the one concern you have is when you go to Colorado, sometimes it wrecks your bullpen. But sometimes you just got to leave a guy out there to take one for the team. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the way it projects out right now, like if Ashcraft is getting banged around, so, hey, well, sorry, man, sucks to suck, but we're about to go play the Cubs and we can't have the entire bullpen trashed because you gave up six in the second inning, right? And that's, and that's another thing by the time we speak again, we could see Ashcraft or Abbott, not both, but one of them won't be in the starting rotation because Brian Williamson has come back from his, his injuries. And there's speculation with some of the holes that we have in our starting rotation. Maybe even, well, they can't bring, they can't send Montas down, but it could be potential that in their next starts, if one of these two guys you know, does not play well, that they'll bring Brian Williamson back and he'll be in that rotation instead. Man, I've so, forgotten about Williamson. How's he doing? He's fine now. He he's he's healthy. He's gonna start his uh I think tomorrow I think he's gonna uh start working uh doing his rehab starts and getting ready to who who, who to is hit. your who is your guest that would be the first one out of the rotation to bring him back being a betting man i would say that abbott would go down and bring williamson up being abbott i don't think david bell likes him there's just something there I and i would not be shocked if, oh. if abbott gets sent down because that was always that, that was a rumor mill before the season started that even in spring training david bell wasn't pleased with abbott and wanted to send abbott down and he just couldn't because williamson was still injured at the time so that's pretty good. I I think he's okay. You know, I don't hate him. Hmm? I don't hate him. I don't hate him either. I mean, to me, Ashcraft is the guy that ought to be in the bullpen. I wouldn't send him that's down because I because I'd love to use him as a long man, right? But he doesn't have blow you away stuff. No, he he just uh, he he just a meat and grinder kind of pitcher. He just gives you. He, Six innings, 
The only thing I don't know, uh, maybe you have a handle on this, is who has options. Because you don't want to send one of those guys down and you know lose them, obviously. Mm. That 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 would be my biggest question with that. Maybe we can look into that by a next show. Um, I know I'm catching you flat footed with that, but they, but that would be my biggest question is uh, who has options. Because I, I, I'll give you a perfect example. Everyone's clamoring, wanting to know why the hell the Braves have three catchers on the roster right now because Sean Murphy finally came back from the IL. Mm-hmm. Well, it's because, you, it's because you can't send Chadwick Trump down without DFAing him first. And he's never going to get through waivers. Right. He's a very good backup catcher. I don't know if anyone would ever want him as a starter long-term. But he's been a very good backup catcher for the Braves. Yeah, that, that's not unusual, too, why they were talking about three catchers with you guys. We had th- uh, The Reds had three catchers last year. We had Stevenson, Molly, and um, one guy. I, now I've forgotten the third guy because we he finally left. And I can't think of his name. Molly? Yeah, it was Mall, Molly. Uh, they all three just catchers can't play any other position, though? Um. Uh, well, well, no, because Molly, I believe, Mall or can play first too. So, yeah, that's I, the well. It t- technically, Travis Darno can play first base, right? But he's not really that option. Um, but he could play first base. Uh, w- one of the idiot writers <laughs> that covers the Braves, um, had him going to right field on a move the other day. I was like, what in the hell is this guy talking about? Then he quickly deleted the damn tweet, but everybody already dragged him for it. Um, (laughs) I was like, you drunk. (laughs) Like, what are you talking about? Travis Darno has got some of the worst wheels, not just in baseball in the United States of America. And you're going to go put them out there in right field. (laughs) I'd rather send a pitcher out there and go play defense. Yeah. Screw it, man. Uh, (laughs) Try it. (laughs) Give it a try there. Max Fried. Yeah. Um, uh But that's the kind of stuff that fans have to realize when moves are made and you're just, you're just speculating on what could be done. You need to check on what, what options are actually there. Can we talk about the fact that these city connect jerseys are never, ever worth a damn. Did you see the, did you see the Toronto ones last night? Oh, that was horrible. They're awful. There's some dope. Was going oh, really good. It is all over social media. I'm like, what are you talking about? They're god awful. Look, the all that's you- not terrible because it's got the maple leaf on top of it. Okay, yeah, uh, I, I could see buying the ball cap if you were a fan. I could also see like like they had hoodies that had that ball that, that had the logo on the. All right, what? But the jersey, no man, the jersey and the, no, they suck. They're all terrible. And why are they all going to black? Do they not understand that nine times out of ten you're going to be playing, you're going to be wearing these damn things in the summer? Look, I was just saying, you think those jerseys are bad? Did you see the ones that the St. Louis Cardinals were sporting? Oh, the Lou? The Lou. What the hell was that? <laughs> the Lou. I hope they never play a game in Britain with that. With the that what a terrible, terrible. Ooh. Who in the Cardinals organization came up with that? Because they should be. That's the Cardinal way. Aren't they always talking about the Cardinal way? Like there's some classy organization. The Lou. <laughs> the Lou. Oh, I just say as Cincinnati, Cincinnati Reds fans, thank you for that laugh. Because that was the best thing I could have seen. Do the oh, Reds have a city I don't think I've ever seen one. Oh, uh, they were they were uh, I uh, online when they were announcing that thing with the Lou. They um, put it together. It looks awful. I'm not even going to describe it. It's not even worth. It's just hysterical. I'll be interested you- to see what the Cincinnati one. The Braves one is okay. It's nothing special, but I like it because it looks so much. So, d- full disclosure. They weren't creative. It looks a lot like it looks like a blend of the home jerseys from the Braves in the 80s and the home jerseys 
of the Braves in the 70s, right? It's a very blend of it. So that, mm -hmm. but, but that's why it's not terrible because it looks familiar. Um, the, those Toronto ones, they are up there with the, with the putrid ones from Philadelphia, which for some strange reason have black and yellow pants like Pittsburgh. Yeah, what the uh, hell are you doing? The Kansas City Royals, those are not terrible. I like those. They, they, they wore theirs last night, and I always forget about them when we talk about um, the Washington Nationals have solid ones. The ones that have the rose for the um, for the city of Washington. I forget the name of the rose, but the it's um, uh, but it, it was the Nationals have decent ones. There's never one that I see goes, wow, that's awesome. They're either, eh, it's not terrible, or ugh, like the Boston Red Sox yellow jerseys. What the hell is that? Ugh. Look like Big Bird running up and down the field. We got to get <laughs> uh, get to jam. And what is your walk off for the day, sir? I thought some, at least some good news that I heard just for the National League for baseball overall is finally getting rid of that Angel Hernandez, not being a damn umpire anymore next one up let's get rid of cb buckner that's my walk off <laughs> amen Ugh. can we get rid of why is it you can't fire any of these guys if they suck at their job you can fire everybody else on the planet who, who's bad at their job unless they rig an election we'll see you next time <laughs> <Hey> <laughs>